Rahma, an education facilitator from National Gallery Singapore. And I'm just playing around with my wooden blocks trying to build a sculpture. A sculpture is something that you make by molding, shaping, or by putting things together to create something that is three-dimensional. It has length, width, and also height. You can walk all around it and look at it from different sides. In today's tutorial, we will be looking at a sculpture by Han Sai Por, a well-known Singaporean sculptor whose works are usually large and nature-inspired. Let's go! This sculpture by artist Han Sai Por is titled Extinction Series 11 and 12. You can't quite tell from this image, but actually this sculpture is quite big. It's about 1.53 meters tall. That's roughly about the height of a primary 5 child. Let's look closer at this sculpture. What do you see? I notice that it has curvy lines and an organic shape that reminds me of a stretched out letter S. If this sculpture could move, I imagine it to be swaying to the rhythm of a gentle breeze. What about you? What does this sculpture remind you of? It's always fun to imagine what organic shapes remind us of. It's kind of like cloud watching. I think it's really cool how the use of organic shapes and curvy lines can make a sculpture seem like it's moving. Let's try it out too. We can make a sculpture using materials that can be found at home. To build our sculpture, we will need a recycled bottle. I'm just using an old shampoo bottle. Find something around your house you could use to weigh your bottle down. This is just to stop your sculpture from tipping over when it's done later. Beans or sand work well. A funnel to pour it all in. Craft wire if you have, otherwise better still pipe cleaners. It's more flexible and easier to shape. Masking tape and foil which you will need to cut into strips later. For the paper mache part, you will need a few pieces of newspaper, white glue, some water, a container and a spoon to mix your glue mixture in. And don't forget, something to protect your workspace. And to paint your sculpture, you will need some brushes, a jar of water, a rag and a palette. Mine is reused from an 8 carton, and of course, some tubes of acrylic paint. Okay, let's begin! Did you manage to find something to weigh your bottle down? Fill it up till it's just heavy enough to stop your sculpture from tipping over later. Okay, here I'm sealing my bottle with foil and tape, because originally my bottle came with a pump and not a cap. You can begin to fashion your pipe cleaners any way you like. Use the neck of your bottle to anchor it. Then extend your pipe cleaner by adding another one. Play around with it to see which arrangement you like best. A good tip to steady your pipe cleaners is to just keep twisting it. I'm happy with how my pipe cleaners have turned out and now I'm ready to secure everything down with my good old masking tape. Using your strips of foil, cover the negative spaces formed by your pipe cleaners. Wrap them up and pinch around a little so you can closely follow its shape. Keep going till all your pipe cleaners are all wrapped up. Mine's all done, so that means it's time for paper mache. To get your paper mache party started, begin by tearing your newspaper into strips. Thinner strips are better for smaller areas like around your pipe cleaners and wider strips are better for around your bottle. 
paper mache is so much fun, but it can get a little bit messy, so it's best you protect your workspace well. To make your glue mixture, pour out some white glue into your container. Then add in just enough water to thin it all down. Your glue mixture should be just a little less sticky and at the same time wet enough to absorb your newspaper. Fully submerge your newspaper in and squeegee off the excess. Squeegee twice just to be sure. Wrap it around and smoothen down by tapping. If you enjoy playing with slime or oobleck, I'm sure you will love this part of the activity. Just keep going till it's all done. It's easier to use thinner strips around your pipe cleaners. Tear off the excess if you need to. You're almost done. Check your work and see if you missed anything out. A little bit more of pinching and tapping around and you're good to go! Was that your first time with paper mache? Did you like the slimy and sticky texture? Be sure to wash your hands really well. The secret is to use lukewarm water to get all of that glue off. Now, take a break while you leave your sculpture overnight to dry. Alright guys, hope you had a good rest. Now, on the next day, check if your sculpture has dried up. If it has, then it's good news! We can begin painting it. Ready your paint materials and choose the colours that you like. You can also mix them around to find your perfect shade. Only one thing left to do now, colour your sculpture. At first, I only wanted to use one colour for the whole sculpture. But then I got carried away with mixing my colours and so I added another and another. Look at all these lovely shades I found just by playing around with my colours. Of course, I played around some more and found just the right shade to finish my sculpture. Almost done there, but let's not forget that tricky space around the bottleneck. A bit of touch up here and there. And all done! Now that we're all done, let's properly look at our sculpture. Did you also use organic shapes and curvy lines? What does the shape of your sculpture remind you of? I think mine looks a little bit like a pineapple or maybe a sea creature. I wish I could see all of your sculptures. I bet it looks amazing. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did making the sculpture. Thank you for joining me and for now, bye bye!